let's try this. When you go to your microphone, there's, so at the bottom left, it's the mute button. Press the arrow going up and then tell me, wait. Hold on, let me see something real quick. Can you still hear me? Yes. Everyone, welcome to the third episode of the Razcast. That's our intro, just us figuring that out. So I, it looks like, <laughs> so last time, well, so last time I got this working and my audio was really low, so I put it up because I know all of you want to hear how freaking loud I am. We're going to wait to cuss because, you know, YouTube doesn't like cussing off top. But when we get deep in this mother fudger, we'll get super, mm. we'll just drop the F word every two seconds. Um. I'm pretty sure it's because I went and I put this for the microphone. But when I clicked on the arrow, as I was telling Eric, hey, I think you need to adjust something. It says that my input and my output was through that, or it was through, this was the input and this was the output, the microphone. I don't know. We're talking about Oscar <laughs> I can tell um, that your input is not uh, the best output. Ba-boom. So, wow. Eric, I guess my Fire question... Hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not Miles Teller by any means. Uh, I couldn't ever survive J.K. Simmons. Um, <laughs> so, last time we talked... So, by the way, I do apologize if I'm looking the way I'm looking is because I moved it because I have all the nominations here and it's easy for me to kind of just go through. What is your, um, I guess we can start with opening takes because I know you haven't seen every Oscar movie. So that's part of this. I know I'm assuming Eric will kind of go off of what I talk about versus maybe like what he's heard about some of these movies and whatnot. But what, what do you feel when you first saw this list? What did you feel? about these nominations again i want everyone to also understand the oscars are the oscars they're not a thing that we hold to like the highest regard but in terms of having fun with it was it a like oh that's a decent list or were you kind of like what the hell are you doing um so again i haven't <laughs> tell you the truth i've only seen two of these movies brian knows one of them I will not spoil what the second one is because he's gonna he's gonna be like, oh, that's the one you saw. I um, know what the second one is. You told me about it. It's the best movie of the year. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on the list and I was like, really? Really? Yep. Um, no, um, but I watched all the trailers before watching this. So <laughs> that's gonna be my basis of what I think of everything. Um, what I can tell from just looking at the 10 nominations for best picture, they're fine. You know, there seems like Oscar movies. Oh, I mean, by the way, my name is Brian. <laughs> we forgot. I was talking too much. I try and always get straight into it. What's your name? Not Eric. <laughs> Not Eric. Correct. Yeah, so we we thought this time we'd talk about the Oscar nominations. Anyways, anywho, we don't do normal intros, but I forgot. <laughs> we just go into it and we just we say, go. they'll figure it out. We just do what we want because we're rascals. But yeah, so you said they, they look like Oscar movies. Was there, okay, so was there a movie that you saw a trailer for that you were like kind of mad, like, oh, that might have been a movie that I really liked if I saw it? Uh, Nightmare Alley. Nightmare Alley is the only one that I'm like, yeah. I wish I could see. I mean, it's on HBO Max. So if I have time within the next, like, what, two days, I'm, I'm not going to be able to watch it live because I work the Oscar night, of course. Yeah. Disappointing. Um, but yeah, that's the only one that I'm like, oh, man, if I could have seen that in a theater, which I mean, theaters are playing these movies right now, but it's really fucking weird because they don't play them consistently because they are like oh but we need screenings for like oh i don't know what came out this week the lost city yeah like it's 
it gets very complicated when you go to see movies that you know are going to be like Oscar nominees because most of them, obviously there's movies on here, excuse me, that are like Netflix movies. But then there's movies like Nightmare Alley, which is like Dune, like Dune, for example, is a movie that you know is going to be in theaters for a little bit of time. Nightmare mm-hmm. Alley is not a movie you're expecting to like have around for like five weeks to where, like you said, you have to kind of plan through the week like, OK, shit, like when am I going to be able to because I do the same thing. I'm like, well, when can I fit this movie in? When can I fit this movie in? Luckily, a lot of these movies were also like HBO Max, like first day release. Like I know yeah. King Richard was like that. Um, so a lot of these movies are kind of easy to be like, hey, I could just throw it on. <laughs> yeah. I, if not, all these movies are on a streaming service of some kind. I think the only one that isn't, or the only two that aren't, are uh, Licorice Pizza and uh, Drive My Car. I believe those are the only two that you can't like find very easily. Drive My Car's on HBO Max. Okay. Well, um, but I don't it, suggest it. it anyways we'll, we'll talk about that i don't worry I, wa- I watched the trailer and i have feelings yes so um honestly what i'm gonna do is we're gonna just go through them we're not gonna be funny when it comes to the categories that like we can't speak on because i'll be honest here in michigan the dia every year they do like the short film like nominees in like a like a um a marathon and i've always wanted to go to one of them and i still never have so every year they still you can go out and find them or they're like on you know streaming or apple or whatever so we're not going to talk about those we'll make random educated guesses but we're not going to like you know we're not going to go too much into them not because it's a disrespectful thing those are just not things we saw and i would rather not be like what the stupid short film that went no because guess what all the if you were nominated for short film you're fucking awesome because i haven't so you're the man or the woman or the they or whoever and we're so glad that it's not going to be shot live and it's going to be pre-recorded and put into the show didn't they try and do this like a few years ago and then they went back on it and now they're trying to do it again it's the Oscars. It's the, the Oscars the is same. not meant to be entertaining. It's for fucking film nerds like us that are like, we want to know what won best sound. <laughs> Literally, when they when they said, oh, we're going to have a fan voted uh, best whatever popular movie or whatever, because yeah. No Way Home didn't get nominated. And I was like, I know it wasn't going to get nominated. Have you met the people on this Academy? Yeah. They Which well, they, Yeah. We'll get into that too. I think obviously we'll have more to say. And also we will talk about maybe things that we thought should have been nominated, maybe our own choices. So we're going to kind of, we're going to do a mix of like how we feel plus what we think is going to happen. So without further ado, we're going to get to the joke that I already said, best sound, because again, apparently the Academy thinks mixing and editing is the same thing. It is not. Um, So we got Dune, we got the power of the dog, no time to die, Belfast and West Side Story. If I had a pick, I mean, sound is always one of those things where it just depends on what you're looking at. Because a lot of times, most people kind of go for like the big movie. The correct answer is Dune. That's what I was going to say. I feel like a lot of times sound kind of goes to like a war movie or goes to like kind of the big big sci-fi movie. Yeah, because it's again, like people don't realize like and it's fun to learn what the difference between mixing and editing is because I never knew. And mixing is literally just mixing, sound mixing is what Christopher Nolan doesn't know how to do. I love him and I'm still making jokes. I love you, buddy. Um, We'll see if Oppenheimer has the same issue. Um, But then editing is like the way, like it's kind of like ADR and stuff like that and like how realistic. So I agree with you. Not just because that is one of the two movies you've seen, but I agree. I think out oh, of yeah. all these, I mean, West Side Story fits because it's the whole music, music and all that. Belfast has some kind of like war stuff in it because that's during the time in history where, which isn't like a big, big part of the story, but it is. And then The Power of the Dog, I like I mean, it's it. Cowboys. It's a cowboy, but it's kind of like a slower movie. And I don't think there's that much happening sound wise. I'm not saying the sound is. Again, I want you all to understand. Gun shot good, okay? Hey, when when uh when we see his bare cheeks, Doctor Strange's bare butt in the movie, that sound, his cheeks clapping, excellent. They had the mic, the boom mic, like right up his butt. 
He put a lapel mic in his butt. Like, we need the best sound. <laughs> Dune. Anyways, uh, best production design. Uh, Nightmare Alley, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Dune, and Tragedy of Macbeth. So I have a tie for this. So I've seen all these movies too. I think if I had to go with two, it would be Nightmare Alley because of the carnival stuff. It's gorgeous. We all know Guillermo. Speaking of like a Christopher Nolan, Guillermo is a, I want real things. I want <laughs> extravagant sets and makeup. Like he's that guy. And the production design is crazy. And then Macbeth has these wonderful sets and the thing. And I, I want you to understand everyone. I don't like Shakespeare. I don't like it. I only watched it because of the Coen brothers. And I'm not going to lie. Oh, Cohen, just one. Oh, that is true. I was going to say, uh, Ethan, yeah. Ethan, I don't think directs. He murdered his brother. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think that's what happened. Anyways, he did what happened to Macbeth tie-in but i'm not gonna lie i like it because there's something about people that really like like shakespeare that do a good job like denzel killed it he was great but i love how the movie looks kind of like a movie like it clearly looks fake and it's like sets but they mix it with like real stuff so you kind of it's like that weird middle ground and i thought that's why i really liked the movie it had a cool style to it um I think the rest of these, I mean, Dune would be a good one, but I think in terms of physicality, I think Dune is more the special effects with the sets are cool as a mix. I think in terms of just straight up production design, I might go with Nightmare Alley more so because the when you watch that first half of the movie, it's like incredible. So I don't know if you have a take on this one. <laughs> um, so my take is... Have you heard of a, a movie called Chicago? Have I, you heard of a movie yes. called Dream Girls? The Oscars loves these designs and these production sets for these musicals. So I think, I'm not saying it's going to win, but I think West Side Story has a shot just because yeah. uh, when, you th- when you think of a musical production, production is literally in the title. So if you're set... You know, it clearly it's nominated for a reason. You know, I haven't seen it. It's on Disney Plus. Um, but uh, I think it does have a shot in that aspect just because of the whole, oh, man, it's musical. We uh, see that you worked really hard on making uh, the room big enough for people to dance uh, and fake fights and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I personally would think I would want Nightmare Alley to win out of all of it because the just the shots of all the the carnival stuff and you know we love a good carnival time That's to time. Right. That's right. Yeah, time to time, not all the time, just time to time. I like that. Time to time. Uh, best film editing. Bohemian Rhapsody. Well, that's a good transition because the first one on this list is Don't Look Up. Um, you tick, 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 looked boom. up. I did look up when I did that. Uh, Tick, Tick, Boom, King Richard, Dune, and Power of the Dog. So film editing is always very interesting because I think for a while, film editing used to be one of the ones where like, if you knew film editing went to a movie, that was best picture. Like that always kind of went hand in hand, but those were the old days of the Oscars where it was like, you know. They actually um, cared. That Yeah. But so now looking at this list i don't i'm trying to really remember if any of the editing in any of these films stuck out i mean if we talk about like animated editing and when i say that obviously there's one film on here eh, i don't like it but don't look up is kind of like that too even though i think ever since the big short adam mckay is trying like i think the big short was such a great success that I feel like every time he's tried to replicate it, it's gotten worse. And like the fact that don't look up makes vice look like a fucking phenomenal movie is crazy to me, but tick, tick, boom is what I think about. And I didn't even love that movie. Like a lot of people did. Um, but tick, tick, boom, I think out of all of them might be the best in terms of you go back to the musical thing. Like it's a lot of like, there's it's like a small movie and it's also a big movie like there's small little musical numbers and big musical numbers and i think the way it edits from 
like him doing his song to the stuff happening in the movie. I think in terms of like that kind of editing, that one sticks out the most. Um, I don't really know of any of them like I would be so in love. As much as I love Dune, I don't know if the editing was like absolutely like fantastic. Um, but I would like it to go to Tick, Tick, Boom also because I don't think Andrew Garfield's going to win. So I think having that get an Oscar would be kind of a nice, hey, we'll give you something. So I'll go with Tick, Tick, Boom. Uh, I, I'm going to go with, uh, based off of what I've seen from the trailers, I'm going to go with uh, The Power of the Dog. Okay. I think, I think um, the way that, I mean, at least from a trailer perspective, you know, a trailer team is completely different from a film editing team. I could see how they had their shots around and moved it around and figured things out as much as I love Dune as well. Um, I don't think the editing was the strongest point of that movie. And if it was going to win something, it would not be that. Um, and then I, I've seen tick, tick, boom, you've known this. Um, I, again, I know what style you're talking about. I don't think the editing was the strongest part of that because as much as you're like, you like the aspect of them cutting back and forth between the singing and the talking, singing and the talking. Again, if it sticks to just that, you're like, oh, I uh, couldn't get confused a little bit. And then mm -hmm. don't look up is don't look up. And that's just the style that movie is. And it's, it literally reminds me so much of Bohemian Rhapsody <laughs> of how that editing is. I just think of that one scene that went viral before it won the Oscar of them sitting. And I'm like, this looks like they shot it like, like Taken 3. Like an action scene in Taken mm -hmm. So you're going to say Power of the Dog then? I'm going to say Power of the Dog, yeah. That does go Just, in line with my original thing of like, usually it goes to Best Picture, and but we'll get to that too, because I have a lot to say about Best Picture, but, but that's a good choice though, because I think that's the more like, that film is slow, and I think the editing is a lot more precise. And I think I'm like Dune, where Dune is slow in a different way. I think it's, the editing is not the part of the movie. Like it's, the editing is not, doing a good job with the pace of it i think power the dog the editing works with the pacing so mm -hmm. um okay so best costume design our favorite uh nightmare alley corella west side story dune and cyrano i'm giving it to cyrano because this is the only oscar that this movie got is my favorite movie of 2021 you thought pig was until i saw this and i'm not gonna lie <laughs> this movie i think i loved it way more than i did and the music was great Peter Dinklage was great. I fucking loved it. Um, so I'm just giving it to that as a petty thing. But I think out of all of them, the only one that I would hope they don't give it to, and this is not me being biased, I would say West Side Story, because I think that is just kind of recreating a time. Whereas I think I've never seen Corella, but clearly that's a, we have to get like, the whole point of Corella is she oh, has is, yeah. costumes. So like yeah. I can see it going to that. Um, and also it's like a big Disney production. So, and then Dune is cool. And then Nightmare Alley, I think is kind of like West Side Story, but they, I think it's a period of time. That's a lot more like, they do a lot more fascinating looks in it and they have a little more to work with, but I'm just going with Cyrano as a bias pick. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm going to go with Corella because unfortunately that's the whole aspect of the movie is the making mm -hmm. of the costumes. I haven't seen Corella. I'm never going to see Corella because I think that is a travesty upon mankind most likely um but um you know i think the reason why like movies like nightmare alley and uh, west side story they get nominated for these things is i think back to what was that daniel day the last one he did daniel day lewis uh, uh phantom thread phantom thread those are all pristine outfits and they're all like the top notch things mm -hmm. and like this kind of goes into dune as well because a lot of the time they're in that like formal attire anyway. Like sometimes, yes, they're in those the battle gear and stuff like that. And they have the tube nose things. Um, but, you know, they really like to see the quality of like these, these formal outfits, as I call them. Um, so I can see why like movies like West Side, even though West Side isn't really the formal, it's more casual style, but like for the time period and same with Nightmare Alley. Um, but I'm, I'm going to unfortunately give it to Corella because of what it's about. <laughs> like, unfortunately. 
Um, uh, if I get, I, I again, I've seen like the one trailer for Cierno, and I mean, yes, you sh- you shook it to me when I was like, oh, what could it? You were watching one? it going, and you were like, shit, that was. Hey, you follow me on Letterbox now. You should have saw. I gave that a five star. That was when I I saw after that movie was over. I said, Eric and I literally talked about movies that like, even if you don't think they're amazing, there wasn't a lot of movies last year that were like, that was a good movie. And I finished that movie and I remember looking at Jade going, is this like a fucking perfect movie? Because I don't know why I love this this much, but yes. Um, You love a sad stale starring Peter Dinklage. Yes, I do. Hey, it was wonderful. And I don't even like Joe Wright because I didn't like Darkest Hour. His films are not for me, but I was like, dude, you won me over with this. Um, best cinematography. I think this is actually for the, I actually think this is a pretty solid one all around. Uh, Nightmare Alley, Power of the Dog, West Side Story, Dune, and Macbeth. I'm going with Dune simply because I want it to also be his way to get nominated for the Batman, Greg Frazier. (laughs) Um, But Macbeth can win because it's definitely a lot of static shots that look like paintings. Power of the Dog, I think, is beautiful. West Side Story, I think, has good moments. I don't think overall it's amazing, but I do think it has some really good, like, cool, interesting shots. And then Nightmare Alley, there's just that way that Guillermo has his movies be kind of like mystic, but also just kind of like creepy and like gross. And it works very well. So I honestly am fine seeing it go to any of them. I'll just root for Dune because I feel like Denny just always has these gorgeous shots in his films. And I think it's kind of going off of that Blade Runner 2049 thing when Roger Deakins finally won his Oscar. So I'll go with that. Yeah, I'm going to go with Dune as well. If this, if Dune was going to win one besides sound, it's going to be cinematography. Yeah. Um, I do think though that Macbeth, because I mean, from seeing what I've seen of it, how it's shot and everything, mm-hmm. that is definitely a contender as well. That would be my, probably my second choice, but I would definitely give it to Dune. This is probably the for sure Dune one. Oh yeah, it yeah. A lot of times when it's these big, massive movies that look so good, you kind of are like, that's kind I mean, of their way of being like, we'll give them this Oscar. So. All I wanted to know was how they were going to shoot the giant fucking worm. And they made it the aspect where you can clearly tell, like, this is the size of the human, and here's the size of this fucking worm. Yes. And you're and like, a okay. skin full I- worm. <laughs> yes, it was terrifying. That's his tongue. <laughs> so okay so we're gonna go through these two real quick we're just gonna blind guess that these are the following two that uh we can't have too much on that short documentary i'm gonna read you the five titles you're just gonna guess one so we got when we were bullies the queen of basketball three songs for ben benazir i believe uh audible and lead me home i'm gonna just go with the queen of basketball uh, I'm going to go with Bullies because the Oscar loves a good underdog uh, okay. story. Cool. Like it. And then for best animated short film, we have Robin Robin. We have Affairs of the Art. We have Beast. We have the Windshield Wiper. And we have Box Ballet. I want Windshield Wiper just because of the name, but it probably is like the goofiest one of all of them. Like, watch, like all the other ones are probably so gorgeous. And then that one's just like a bunch of stick figures, like Windshield Wiper. <laughs> See, they didn't nominate the best one, which was the raccoon one before Encanto. Because... And yeah, and usually, and that kind of shocks me because I get it. Like a lot of times when it comes to certain animated stuff, they always give it to sometimes because lately they've been kind of doing the whole, oh, like this cool little one one. Um, but I agree with you. But yeah, I'm just going to go with um, Wiper. I'm going to go with uh, the box ballet because I just want to see a bunch of ballet dancers box each other. Yep, that's exactly what that means. Um, I'm sure that's what it's about. Best original score. Best okay. original score. Uh, Encanto, mm-hmm. Dune, Parallel Mothers, which was a surprise movie that I really love this year. Uh, Don't Look Up, which upsets me that Nicholas Breitel did that because he did this music for Moonlight and When Beale Street Could Talk. He's a phenomenal composer, but you know, you got to do work. You got to get some money. Um, And then The Power of the Dog, which I'm going to go with because Johnny Greenwood of Radiohead finally deserves an Oscar after working with Paul Thomas Anderson all this time. I think that I think and that's probably the 
one of like Encanto. I know the music because or the score rather. I know the yeah, that's the thing. It's talking about the yeah. score. Yeah, yeah, it's not just talking about because you the know song. Hans Zimmer is Hans Zimmer. We know what Hans Zimmer does. I think Johnny Greenwood though kind of pulled something really incredible with the power of the dog, and I I think this will be his win finally. So I'm gonna go with that. Uh, what was the other one? The parallel parallel uh, mothers. That's that uh foreign film with um. Oh my God, I get them. Penelope Cruz. Okay. Um, well, I'm not going with that one because I've never heard of it before, fortunately. No, I oh, should have Because it's a I... foreign movie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, just like I liked the score from Dune, but like again, it, we we know I mean, we know you, Hans. I want something really different. Yeah. I want him to all of a sudden just turn into a, a country folk band for one movie. I want to see what that's like. Oh, maybe for um, part, Dune Part Two. Yeah. Um, and Kanto is like, again, if we're talking about the score, not the music, like songs, the score for Encanto is really f- forgettable. Um, yeah. And then, so I probably would go with you with Power of the Dog in that case, because I did like that. Uh, you're saying Radiohead. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's it's got that feel. Like, Johnny Greenwood, on. like he definitely has a style. Like I remember when we saw Ma- the Master together, like that really creepy, just dum dum boom boom. Like Johnny Greenwood is just he's phenomenal. Like and I'm for so, a cowboy yeah. movie, like come on, like for a gay cowboy movie, take that, yeah. Sam Elliott. Uh, <laughs> best visual effects. I have my answer or one of my two answers. We got Dune. We got Free Guy, the one Oscar that a movie like Free Guy would get nominated for. Shang-Chi, Spider-Man No Way Home, which I'm seeing all these behind the scenes things now. And it kind of makes me dislike that movie a little more with all the dumb CGI stuff. And then No Time to Die. I'm going to give it to either Dune or No Time to Die because those two movies are practical and it's the visual effects within them. Mm -hmm. Free Guy is fine. Free Guy is okay because that movie is supposed to kind of look like a video game. So that's fine and all. And Shang-Chi looks fine until really like the end is kind of a little bit of a mess. And then Spider-Man, I love it still, but seeing that behind the scenes with all the green screen stuff makes me annoyed. But No Time to Die or Dune, I think deserve it. Uh, It's probably going to be Dune. Yeah. Uh, You know, I keep saying that this is the for sure one that Dune is going to win, but like this is the the obvious one i will call this one because they always give it to one that's in the oscar tier like yes the popular movies are in it because they put a lot of money and effort into it but they always give it to just whatever's nominated let's be real or if it's not nominated whatever they know is like the more obscure one like when blade runner won uh visual Frex, what else was nominated that year i think it was like a transformers movie yeah, it's kind of, yeah, usually they give it to, like, either the technologically advancing movie, or they give it, like, they gave it to Ex Machina one year, which was yeah. crazy. That was cool. Uh, oh, shout yeah. Shout to Ex Machina. Yeah, that oh, movie's great. I can't wait for, I can't wait for his next movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the trailer came out, which we're going to be talking about one of the main star of that movie very soon, too, because she is mm. nominated. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, that's a perfect segue because for best adapted screenplay, we're getting to the ones that like, you know, I know everyone can talk about more. The Lost Daughter, which is the movie uh, written by J- uh, Ma- Miss Miss Maggie Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal, uh, Drive My Car, Coda, Dune, and The Power of the Dog. Um, I'm going to come out right and say it. If you like Drive My Car, good for you. Cool. I found nothing in that three hours of a why did I sit through this entire movie that affected me personally. I didn't love The Lost Daughter. I see why people like it, but it just wasn't for me. I actually think the script is pretty, pretty good. Like, I, I'm i impressed. Like, again, Maggie's coming through with her first movie. Like, okay, let's go. Um, and then The Power of the Dog's a good script. And then Coda, I wonder if it's a good screenplay and again, not even being funny, not even with the whole, like with them being deaf, but I wonder if like the way it's written is very nuanced. Um, 
because that's the point. It's a screenplay, not like what you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So honestly, again, I don't want to drive my car because I don't like it, but, and Dune is good, but I don't think, I don't think it's the writing that's bad. Like the writing's not bad, but the movie is not because of the writing. It's more of the world. Like that's kind of that movie. So I would probably say any of the other three deserve it for me. Yeah. Um, this really isn't that strong. Um, Cause this, I mean, yes, we have adapted. So it's clearly from source material of some mm-hmm. kind, whether it be from real life or whether it be from a book or whether it be from, uh, I don't know, another movie for God's sakes. Yeah. I'm sure that's the case that's happened before. Um, I guess i'll go with uh power of the dog in this case okay because yeah I, because again dune dune script is not the strongest part because again if you've read dune you know it's very detailed in that sense because they want you to understand mm-hmm. all this aspect of these this you know this planet and like all the world and the technological stuff when you put that into a script or like a movie you don't get the same aspect you see it visually yes and yeah. like, again you can write that down, stuff down in a script visually it's impressive what they were able to do though because the book is very dense so it is impressive <laughs> that they pulled it off but like you said it's like it's more what you see like it is very visual and so i agree with you on that i think that is a very good point um, mm-hmm. the, the Gaudy Award for Best Makeup and Hairstyling, the one that our favorite movie of all time, uh, Suicide Squad, won for. Uh, the first one. Um, not even the yeah. one that's so... Yeah, not even the second one. Uh, the Eyes of Tammy Faye, Father, Son, House of Gucci. I had to do it. Uh, coming to, to America, which is... That's wild. I didn't even realize that movie was nominated. Uh, Dune and Cruella. From what I've seen, so now this is a category where, so I haven't seen Tammy Faye. So that's, or it will end coming to America. But Tammy Faye, I think from what I've seen, that kind of seems like the one where a lot of the hair and makeup stuff is kind of the big part of it, like of Andrew Garfield and Jessica Chastain. So I would say if they don't go with Cruella, because I think that would probably be, that might be two. That in House of Gucci would kind of be two. I'd probably go with Tammy Faye. I think that might be what they go with because I think they will go with that if Jessica Chastain wins, but we'll get to that. But I'm going to go with that. Um, I'm definitely not going with House of Gucci because Jared Leto, no. Oh, mamma mia, this is an Italian voice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, man, he, he, he looks wrong. Like the makeup does not, look good on him i don't understand how that mm, no because it's just like you can clearly see it's still jerry like for makeup to really impress me like it's really gotta be like okay it's truly transformative in that sense yeah. um so in that case i'm going to go with uh tammy as well um but they're probably going to give it to corella you know yeah which, I mean, like you said, it's one of those, you can hate the movie or love the movie. There's certain things where you can at least appreciate, like, it's if it's a, a poor there's part. Aspects, there's yeah. aspects of Dune that I would be like, oh, that's cool. Because, like, there's some things that are like, okay, clearly, like, how they made a couple of the different, like, <laughs> uh, citizens of the planet and Dave Batista. And, like, the way they had Rebecca Ferguson look, too, with, like, her, like, those, like, witchy women, like, that's Mm -hmm. really well done, too. Yeah, but that, again, that's something I don't think of when I think of Dune. Well, Um, yeah. um, But I'll probably go with Tammy if and as my personal choice, but You get it, Tammy. You go, girl. Uh, Yeah, not Melissa McCarthy, Tammy. Oh, oh, that's the first time I've heard about that movie, probably since it came out. Um, Best original screenplay. Oh, yikes. Oh, yikes. This category. So we got Don't Look Up, which won the Writers Guild of America. So that really insults me. I saw a really good tweet about how if this wins the oscar i'm gonna go out of my way to cause climate change i thought that was really funny um licorice pizza paul thomas anderson or adam mccain and david siriota king richard by zach 
Balin, Belfast by Kenneth Branagh. Oh, I didn't realize he wrote it too. And then the worst person in the world, yo. Oh, I'm I I'm not even going to try and pronounce the director's name. You know who you are. You made it to the Oscars. You're the best. Um, but I have seen all these movies. If worst person in the world wins, that would be kind of a cool, happy surprise. I do not. If don't look up wins this goddamn award, I am going to be so the the script that tells you everything that you're supposed to feel every five seconds of the movie like hey did you know this movie is about this wink wink like i at this did point you know these people are dumb yeah we don't look hashtag don't look up it's on the hat wink i don't even care if king richard wins this over it just as long as don't look up so that's gonna be my answer as long as don't look up <laughs> wins I do not care who this goes to because Pig is not on here. There's a lot of movies that should be on here that aren't, and that's really upsetting. But I'm just going to – that's my answer. I don't care if it's not – don't look up. <laughs> um, so, unfortunately, I'm going to say that they're probably going to let Don't Look Up win. Knowing how they they're do woke. Like- they're so woke at not the Academy. Not even that. It's just that, like, they, the Academy loves – Adam McKay's writing style for some reason. And Which, again, the big short is really well written because it's based on a book. And then Vice is kind of based on books. And it's like, okay, you're kind of... No, no, Adam McKay, stop trying to be smart guy. You know, you made, you made fucking uh, Step Brothers. <laughs> Step Brothers. Calm, calm down. And then this movie is an original movie. And my God, it is, it is something original. What are you about? The trailer says based on true events. This is in the wrong category. Pull it out. Uh, no, but I, I hear really good things about uh, what was, what was the worst person the in the, the world? Worst person in the world. Yeah. I've heard really good things. Um, have you seen that picture of uh, the movie theater <laughs> that has two movies playing and it has the worst person in the world and then underneath? the batman Batman. it was all the joker the joker did that Mm -hmm. it's a good Um, movie i didn't love it like everyone did because it was so hype for me but i definitely think it's a unique movie and very different so if it went to that i'd be okay with it because i actually think the writing is very honest and i like movies like that that are raw and honest so um you're trying to make me sad i'm trying to avoid the inevitable so we're just gonna (laughs) move A uh, best documentary feature. So sadly, I've only seen two of these, but I do. And one the of guys the- who did <clears throat> Free Solo didn't get nominated, which, which yeah, that's a shame because that's a good that's that's a good Oscar bait documentary. Like that's a good like I'm surprised I didn't get nominated. Yeah, because um, it's actually a good thing. I haven't it seen it, but it I, I, knowing Free Solo, like um, fuck, that was good. It yeah, it was good. Ascension, Flea, Summer of Soul, Writing with Fire, Attica. Summer Soul is a fucking punch to the face of like energy. I love it. Quest Love's directorial debut is incredible. I don't think Flea deserves all the hype. I think it was cool. I think it was, there was parts that were really emotional. It didn't do as much for me as other people. I don't know if that's going to be the movie that wins. It might. I hope it goes to Summer Soul because I think that's a better movie. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I think Summer Soul definitely deserves it. See, I'm I'm giving it to Flea. Yeah. 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 Well, let's we'll see. Because like I said, I don't think I'd be upset with Flea because I don't think it's like a terrible movie. And I got screwed over when Boy State didn't get nominated last year and then when uh, Crip Camp didn't win. But apparently the Octopus Teacher movie is good. Jay told me it's wonderful and I still have to watch it. Oh, good. Um, so Best Director. Jane Campion, who loves to say things that people get upset about with the power of the dog. Uh, Ryu Suke Hamaguchi, Drive My Car. I hope I said that mostly right. I'm not trying to be, because I actually want to say all their names. Japanese, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, Liquor's Pizza, Kenneth Branagh, Belfast, Steven Spielberg, West Side Story. I think if they go with same picture and director, I have a theory on what might win best picture. I don't think if what sounds like it's going to happen, I don't think it's actually going to be the licorice pizza. We're going to give Paul Thomas Anderson his Oscar. Finally, I think it's a power of the dog thing, which is kind of weird because I feel like 
a lot of years you kind of get that, oh, it's going to be this. Oh, it's going to be this. But like, I felt like Power of the Dog has been that movie that like, is it? Oh, okay. I guess it is because it's winning. Um, I would like to go to PTA, even though I have a big problem with Licorice Pizza. I love him and <laughs> I, 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 and it upsets me the one thing, but also like, I think he deserves an Oscar at this point, but a Jane Campion wins her second. I don't see it being a bad thing because I think she did a great job. Um, yeah, I would say. Yeah. See, I would just from what I can tell, I can tell that licorice pizza is definitely one of more or weaker PTA film in a sense. Which is funny the- because I actually think it's his best film besides like the last 40 seconds of the movie because up until that point because you know what usually when a best picture wins it's one of three things it's usually the hollywood we love hollywood or it's the like the safe movie or it's like the edgy movie like a moonlight like when moonlight won it was like oh whoa moonlight won lakers pizza is like Liquor's pizza, what? What did you think I was gonna say? <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, <laughs> I was gonna be like, what are you talking about? La La Land clearly won. Remember? Oh, I thought I thought you were gonna make a joke like, oh, edgy movie that won Best Picture. Oh, Green Book. Anyways, Green um, Book. <laughs> um. Oh no! Like, uh, freaking. Uh, what, what was that one uh, newspaper movie? Oh, Spotlight. Spotlight. That was, that was the safe yeah. bet. That was the last, that was the last year besides Green Book that like the Oscars kind of were going for like the old safe choice. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's a time and a half. I I would love to give it to PTA, but I think they'll probably give it to Power of the Dog or, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, from what I've heard about Belfast is that this was a passion project for Brana. It's a so. very, it's a very cute movie. I think it, it's an Oscar bait movie, but it does what it does well. So you I know what care. it reminds me of? It kind of, in a sense, and you probably will be like, yeah, it reminds me of Hugo. Like how Scorsese did that. I mean, I could see that. I could see some it, similarities. It, from what I could tell, you know, it's based around the child in this adult-ish mm-hmm. world and going around it. That's what Hugo reminds me of. I, I mean, I, Hugo is not like a great Scorsese film. I never understood why it got as many Oscars as it did. But um, but it was a passion project for him in a sense, a smaller passion project because he was just like, yeah, I want to talk about movies again because I like movies. Now I'm going to get back into fucking uh, uh, gangsters <laughs> and hating yeah. on superhero movies. No one gets bit in hugo nobody gets bipped and then he's like okay i gotta do a lot of bipping i gotta do a lot of bipping now i gotta get uh sasha baron conan to run around in a subway yes. uniform a security attire. exactly um okay so we're in the acting now so best supporting actress we got mary jane herself kirsten dunce for the power of the dog uh star of the upcoming a24 movie by alex garland jesse buckley in the new movie men but for the lost daughter uh, Judy Dench for Belfast, Ariana DeBoss in West Side Story, and Anjune Ellis for King Richard. It's going to go to Ariana, uh, mm-hmm. even though I actually think this is a pretty solid lineup. I really have no issues with this. Like, I mean, I get it. They're going to give it to her. And I don't think it's like none of these five, I'm like, they need to win over her. And it's kind of just one of those, okay, we're just going to repeat what happened There's, to Rita. But I don't think any of them don't deserve it. it, 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 it There's always one actor category a year that you're kind of like, yeah, everyone was great, but they're giving it to this person, let's be real. That was the case when uh, Whiplash came out. Yeah, everyone was great that year, but they're giving it to J.K. Simmons. Oh, yeah, everyone was great, uh, but Marriage Story came out and Laura Dern was great in it. Yeah, they are going to give it to that. There's always one that you know that they're like, yep, this is the one. And Ariana is the one this year, <laughs> and, unfortunately. And, and again, I love your segues because there's one in this next category that does not. And I love him. And I don't think he's terrible, but God, he does not need to be nominated. I so forgot for best Jared supporting Leto was nominated. Jared Leto nominated for Morbius. Um, best <laughs> supporting actor, 
because they thought that because they saw the screener back in December, but then they're like, well, the movie's now coming out on April 1st. What's going on, Jared? Uh, Troy Kotzer for Coda. As you brought him up, and he's the one that is on this list that I shake my head, J.K. Simmons for being the Ricardos. Jesse Plemons for The Power of the Dog. That's fucking wild. Cody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog. And then who I thought was going to win because he kind of had that very, he had the role of like, this is the best supporting actor. And that is Syrian Hins, AKA Steppenwolf from Belfast. Um, he was the one I thought was going to win it. I was like, okay, Troy Kotzer though. Boy, I'm like, if he's going to win, I'm so excited because he, spoilers for Coda. So I'm going to, I'm going to clap. I'm going to go like this when I'm done. So spoilers start at the end of the movie. Coda is a very typical by the books movie. It is like could, everything you've seen. I can tell. At the very end of the movie, there is a scene where she is going off. And I am literally, I am about to start crying. I can feel myself starting to get emotional right now. And at the very end of the movie, she's like fighting, not wanting to go. And I shit you not, he looks at her and he screams. And you know how deaf people, like if they could still talk, they have like their voice kind of sounds very off. Mm -hmm. He screams, you gotta go. I started crying. I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. And he is so funny in the movie. And like, I told Jade, deaf people are so, like, I feel like I didn't need to know what they were saying half the time because they're so like, well, like the way they animate themselves while they're signing is incredible. So no, it is not because he's deaf. It's because he was fucking phenomenal. <laughs> Oscars are just gonna make the deaf guy win. No, he's phenomenal. And I think all of them besides JK deserve to be here. I'm excited to see him win. And I think he might have the best speech of the night. So I'm very excited for that. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'll. Oh, I'll spoiler over. <laughs> I would probably go with Troy as well. Um, from what I can tell from, because there is a, there's just some power that you have when you clearly can show superiority without having to even use your voice exactly that's what's um, crazy but, but um shout out to jesse plemons if he fucking wins for any reason that would be great because you know what he's not he's never bad in anything he's in let's be real and also i joke with jade i'm like does he just have a clause with his wife that he has to be in movies with her because every time i see her in a movie he happens to be the love interest of her so I'm like, like, do you just need to be in a movie with your wife all the time, Jesse? I mean, hey, it makes work a lot easier, but <laughs> but yeah, I agree. That was probably the one when I saw, I'm like, I know he's not going to win, but fuck yes. That is awesome. Jesse Plemons is so underrated. I'm so glad he got his like his shout out. Um, <laughs> international feature film. We got Flea. We got Luana, a yak in the classroom. That one should win just based on whatever is going on. Uh, yeah. The worst, the yeah, the worst. It sounds like the push of tea. Um, and the yuck. Uh, the worst person in the world. Drive my car. The hand of God. I've seen four of these movies. I think one of them's the best. I don't think it's gonna go because when one of these is also nominated for best picture, I think it's kind it's, of stupid. It's, it's so stupid. Because <laughs> then you're like, oh, who is it gonna go to? So clearly. It's going to go to drive my car. I think it should be the worst person in the world. The hand of God, I was so excited to see from the trailer because it looked interesting. And the movie, I watched it and I was like, wow, that was a waste of time. Like, I was, wow, this is a very small hand. Yeah, I do. <laughs> this is not the hand of God. What is happening? <laughs> but yeah, it will go to drive my car. I think there's really nothing else to say about that because the logic it's, itself. It's just yeah it's like oh. when when parasite was nominated what the fuck else are you gonna pick exactly um best animated feature okay is i'm curious probably this the is category probably, i've seen most of the movies in and i and and even though i don't think all these movies are like incredible incredible i think this is probably like the best like category this year this category is fucking crazy 
Encanto. Flea, which is the first time a documentary and a foreign film has been nominated for that, which is crazy. Raya, which again, like a lot of movies, I have an issue with the ending and how it resolves, but Raya. <laughs> Luca, I just have an issue with the movie. <laughs> yeah. Luca and the Mitchells versus the Machines. If I had to go by quality, Encanto is my favorite. So I wanted to go to Encanto. If I wanted to go something that's a little bit unique and different, I think the Mitchells versus the Machines could be one that makes it. I think Flea might be kind of a dark horse. Um, I think Luca is one of Pixar's best in a while. Like I think this and Turning Red have been kind of like Turning Red, the surprise hit for me. Um, though like, oh, you didn't like Turning Red? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, okay. I was just like, how dare you? Um, I know you were hearing my, yes, Brian doesn't think it looks good. And then that movie suckered me in. Um, but I would say if, it, if I just go off of what I feel, I think Encanto should win because I think also it is one of the better Disney films in a long time by a lot of what they're doing with the structure and the characters. And I think the music's really good. Um, so I would go with Encanto myself. Um, the one I would want to win would be uh, Mitchell's. Um, but I, I have a strong feeling that Flea might take it just because of the aspects that it's in because of all the different categories it's in but also mm-hmm. knowing knowing how the academy works in Kanto will probably win because it's a disney movie and uh mm-hmm. toy story 4 won 2019 and it was probably one of the worst ones on that list yeah Klaus, how dare you do that to santa how dare Despicable. you despicable um, so we actually have another category that I forgot that we don't have a lot of insight into live action short film. Um, so I'm going to go through these and I have my pick just based on who's involved in one of them. So we have the long goodbye, please hold the dress. No, good, goodbye. No one. And on my mind, I'm going to go joking aside. I'm going to go with the long goodbye because Riz Ahmed is involved in it and Riz Ahmed is a fucking genius. So I'm going to go with him with the long goodbye. <laughs> You know, uh, speaking of Riz Ahmed, um, I don't know how much you listen to them. The band Bastille, they came out with an album this year. I love it. But Riz what? Ahmed has a song on it. Yeah, he's a rapper. Yeah, he raps does he rap? on it. He does. He has a song called Promises on it. And it, it's so it's so weird because it's just kind of out of place. But it does transition into the best song on the album. Um, but it's just like Riz Ahmed, the multi talented man. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with uh, what was the last one? Here, let me look at it real quick. It, it's called On My Mind, yeah, On My Mind, because that I, I, I was like that one, you know, because it's on my, on my mind. Uh, best original song, once again, I think one of these would be cool to win so Lin Manuel can get his EGOT, but I don't think it's gonna be that because. The, fi- the song I think is going to win, which I don't think is bad. It's better than the last fucking Bond song. No Time to Die, Billie Eilish and her brother, Phineas. Hey, how Some- dare you say that about Skyfall? Sk- no, Skyfall's the good one. That's the good <laughs> one. Uh, Somehow You Know. Uh, oh, yeah, by- the last one was Sam Smith. Yeah, by Diane Warren, which Diane Warren no- gets nominated every fucking year because she does a song for every movie. Uh, Down to Joy, Van Morrison. Dose. Aruga, Aruga, t- why, why? By Lin Manuel, <laughs> white man says Spanish words funny, and then "Be Alive" by Beyonce from King Richard and Dixon. Beyonce. It's all caps, Dixon. Oh uh, yeah, it's Billie Eilish, and I'm okay with it. I would like it to go to Lin Manuel, but I actually think the theme worked for the movie, and I think a lot of times you kind of have to look at the theme with what the movie is yeah. involved, like the kind of Bond movie and the Oscars like Bond themes. So I'll is go it, Didn't this song come out technically in 2020 though? See, and that's the funny thing is because they put it out because that was before the pandemic. So that is a good point, but I'm assuming, I wonder if it gets negated because it's attached it's still, to a movie because it's still attached but, to a movie. So I, maybe, um, no, it's, probably gonna go to no time to die um but you know beyonce's got a song in the oscars so we're gonna see beyonce perform most likely yeah because she's she sing it do. i don't know 
yeah, the Oscars will do a bunch of other stuff besides that. I'm trying to think of the performance they said they were going to do at the Oscars that I was like interested uh, in. We don't talk about Bruno, that one. Oh, yeah, they're doing that one. Oh, yeah. The yeah, song that I, apparently I, I I'm too old to realize that that's like a big thing, but I hear all the kids sing that fucking line all the time. Oh, work. trust, trust, trust me. When I'm at work, um, we have a smart TV and has Disney Plus on it. Um, there's normally at least once or twice a week I will hear Encanto play. Mm-hmm. And every time I go in the break room, it always gets to that song. And it's not the fact that someone fast forwards to that section. It's just I happen to walk into the room and that song starts to play. Your timing is like, terrible. I, I, I know. I, I, honestly, that's like I, I, the song that's nominated for Encanto, I do think is probably the best song in that movie. Um, we don't talk about Bruno's fine. I, mainly for the fact that I, the fact that Bruno is John Leguizamo. And so it's like, I would love to talk about John. Oh, he John was Luigi. Like he was the, Luigi. Well, he doesn't want you to talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, well, Bob Hoskins is dead, so I can talk about it as much as I want. Whoa, that just got dark. Anyways, let's move on to freaking best actress, shall we? So we got Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. We got Kristen Stewart and Spencer. Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers. Olivia Coleman in The Lost Daughter and Nicole Kidman in Being the Ricardos. You know, I love um, Olivia Coleman, but every year now, ever since she won, I kind of throw her in. She's, she's she, going to end she, up turning into the new Meryl Streep. And I pretty much I don't want that for her because she's such a wonderful person. Yeah. So I will I never was, forget when she won that Oscar. That was crazy. <laughs> I, I thought, what's her name? Had it in the bag. And then she ended up beating her. And I was like, why? And she literally was like, "I no, I thought this was for you." Yeah. Um, um, I will say this. I actually think Nicole Kidman, out of all three that are nominated for that movie, I actually think she's the best of all three of them. Yeah, so all, all for three me, that are yeah, for um the Ricardos. I think she's for the, the best trailers one. before AMC. I know she's great in them. Yeah, like she. Oh, we come to the we come to the theater. <laughs> Does, to watch we come to this place to watch movies those hey she should have that should have been an honorary oscar those shits fucking slap um i wait because... every time i'm waiting at the amc going wait the movie's not about to start we gotta see mrs keith <laughs> urban boom um olivia coleman i agree i think she was great kristen stewart even though i didn't like spencer her princess diana is pretty crazy good like it's it, there's a lot to it i love penelope cruz and i really liked parallel mothers but I'm going to just go with my gut. It's the movie I haven't seen. And that's Jessica Chastain because apparently she's coming in. I know the internet wanted Kristen Stewart to win. Um, but yeah, it seems like Jessica Chastain might have it in the bag. So I guess we'll see. I'm just going to go with what everyone else has been going off of. I think Kristen Stewart would be a nice surprise, but I'll hold on. That'll be my Olivia Coleman. That'll be my, I think she might be able to kind of sneak in but I think Jessica Chastain has it. So, see, I'm going to do the vice versa. I think it's going to be Kristen Stewart. Okay. Um, but uh, Jessica Chastain, you know, is up there. Has she won an Oscar? I'm trying to remember. She hasn't. She's earned it at this point. Like, I think it's one of those, like, you've been it's nominated the, it, enough. It's that it's that Leo moment, as we all call it, because we were all like, The Revenant's not your best performance, but nobody else did great this year, really. Oh, uh, excuse so. me. Michael Fassbender and Steve Jobs was amazing dude yeah but has, fight you. has he been waiting forever for an oscar well leo Wait shouldn't up. have been waiting because you know he i don't think he deserved Wolf of Wall an Street. Oscar to begin with oh hot take the guy that stars in don't look up even though he's on his private jet telling me to not fucking drive my car shut the fuck up leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> best actor <laughs> i hope that doesn't make me famous uh best actor Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom, Javier Bardem being the Ricardos, Will Smith for King Richard, Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog, and Denzel for Macbeth. I don't even need to say Washington. It's Denzel. We know Denzel. He's the best. I was thinking this was going to be a Benedict, like he's coming in, because I think out of all five of them, he's the best performance. But if this is the, like we just talked about, I think this is going to be the Will Smith, like, okay, we're going to finally give Will Smith an Oscar. He I'm only okay. has one. No, he doesn't. He has one for uh, Ali. He didn't win for Ali. He won for Ali. We're okay. You know, we're looking it up right now. I swear to God, he won for Ali. Will Smith, 
Ali, Oscar. See, here's what I was going to say about Will Smith being nominated was the fact that Jada can shut the fuck up now. He he lost to Denzel and he, oh, lost, lost. To, and he lost to Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Wait, because I think the year, I think that was when training day. I think that was the same oh, year. Okay. I think. I don't know. Damn, training day. Um, see, I, here's, here's my always fun little theory. Um, there's always one of these, and the best actor or the best actress, that the winner has no other, like, not in, like, major nominations, but, like, their movie is, like, barely nominated. And that's why Andrew Garfield <laughs> is going to win Best Actor. Because... I wouldn't I mean, yes, mind it, it. It's not his... His best performance will always be The Social Network. That fucking scene at towards the end. Your fuck you flip-flops. Fuck you, you pretentious flip-flops. douchebag. <laughs> I'm not coming back for... What was it? 12%? I'm coming back for the whole company. That yes. that will be the best moment of his entire career. I'm, but Tick Tick Boom is the one that's like he can hold his own yeah. clearly. And for the fact that you know he's not even like musically trained either. Like no. he had to really push out for that stuff. And he sounds fantastic in it. Um, but I also would think um Denzel has a really strong shot as well. Well, I was telling you, the- I'm not into Shakespeare, but wa- you could tell he loves Shakespeare watching Macbeth. Like he was mm-hmm. so good. It, for, well, Macbeth, you know, is that, you know, that case of, okay, uh, everything's about him. So if your performer as Macbeth isn't, you know, giving his 120%, then why did you put him as Macbeth? And so I would say that those are my two, I would probably say. And again, with that case of it's, they're not nominated for major things. Those are the two I would probably lock in, yeah. but I would prefer Garfield. Yeah. I would be lasagna. okay. because I have, I, yes. Garfield lasagna. My whole thing with King Richard is I had a problem with the kind of structure of the movie. It was, even though the title gives it away, I was kind of like, I want to see what he's a king. About the girls and not about him but i think watching him i kind of got frustrated because i'm like well damn like well the reason why i'm okay with this too is this is not a oh i'm a the genie Woo! <laughs> like he's not will smith like he's actually performing like he's doing act- like he's he's not just being yeah a personality. He, he performed in concussion as well and we know how that tell the out. truth tell the truth tell the truth Um, I think it's going to Will. I'm going to be honest. I loved his SAG speech so much. And like, I would love to see what his speech is going to be at the Oscars. So it's one of those, you know, what? some sort of suicide squad. Hey, you know what? Hey, one of the greatest line deliveries of one time. What are we some, some kind of suicide squad? Okay. Enough about best actor, best picture the one of the worst best picture nominees list i've seen in a long time it's not good nightmare alley dune i don't like how these are not in alphabetical order on google (laughs) nightmare alley dune belfast the power of the dog king richard don't look up drive my car licorice pizza west side story and coda there's been a lot of like rumors speculating that maybe coda might come in at the very end and win it I don't think because they won the SAG award for ensemble that ne- like, what was the movie with all the, it was the black women movie about space that came out a few years ago. What was that movie called with like uh Taraji P Henson and Octavia Spencer and Janelle Monae. Oh, the help? No, not that movie. Shit. What was it? Called? Oh, uh, fuck. I know what you're talking about. I know which one you're talking about though. I'm uh, it. I, I already Googled hidden figures. One. Hidden figures. That one for best ensemble. And I knew the moment that one, I'm like, movie's good. Like, it's fine. That movie was never going to win best picture. So it's like, you can never go off of the ensemble because the you ensemble- go off of what another award show does. Unless because- it's clearly like, you can clearly, clearly tell there's a pattern. There's a, there's a pattern, yeah. Plus the SAG awards are for acting. It's not for picture. Um. I already told Eric this. 
I think it's kind of, even though I don't think, like, I know you love Dune, even though I really it's like not gonna Dune, win. the it's fact not that win. Dune was my favorite out of all 10 of these makes me go it's, like, wow, really? It's disappointing. Oh, fuck. I forgot to talk about a best actor. Uh, Nicolas Cage for Pig and the movie Pig got fucking snubbed. And he even was like, yeah, like, you know, it's kind of an under the radar movie. And, you know, I'm just acting alongside a pig in this movie. And Alex I really Wolf that uh, uh, he gets nominated for uh, the Nick Cage un, movie, un, 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 unremarkable talent or whatever it's called. Yeah, God, yeah. I you know Nick Cage has kind of become a certain kind of joke, but Pig is one of those movies where when I saw that performance, I said, "How is there no way that he's going to get nominated?" And I was so upset. And even Pig, Pig is better than all these movies. Now I know that's my opinion, but Pig is such an interesting movie and looking at this list like there's a lot more like oscar bait in here than i was expecting like king richard and coda i love coda don't get me wrong i the acting alone like my review for it was basically this movie is so by the books but the acting is so fucking good i don't care so the but like coda west side story belfast belfast is a cute movie i liked it but like I'll give it to drive my car because that's like a different movie. Like that's the first time a Japanese movie has been nominated for best picture. So that's cool. Don't look up as such a, Oh, this movie is trying to be about things, even though it's really hitting you over the head. Red rocket could be in this category. That movie was good, you know, cause Florida project never got nominated besides Willem Dafoe. I'm going with power of the dog at this point because Clearly, that seems like the front runner. I had a whole theory about Licorice Pizza having it be PTA's kind of like, okay, it's a fun movie. It's about adolescence. It's about California. It's about a specific time in California because Bradley Cooper plays Barbara Is Streisand's uh, boyfriend. I don't remember his name, but like it has all the workings of, oh, this could be an easy best picture winner, but it seems like Power of the Dog. And again, I'm like, it's weird to me because I wasn't expecting this to be the movie because I felt like this was the underdog. Like I felt like Licorice Pizza was the obvious one for a long time. And then all of a sudden Netflix was like, we're going to give you more money, Academy. We're going to give you more money. Not for Benedict, just for the movie. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'll go with Power of the Dog. Simple. Yeah, um... there's not like a, a strong one like i love dune it's one of my favorites of last year but it's not going to win because i know what these people are like at this yeah. point but i also know that these people like to throw out random fucking things out there like when green book won and it didn't win anything else it won some stuff i think it won well it won what's his, what's his name won? Won. because he's Mahershala. fucking mahershal ali and then i think it yeah. sadly won for like a screenplay because the fucking director of the movie is one of the guys who directed dumb and dumber one of the um, farley brothers so <sighs> i can see it going to coda you so you coda. so you're gonna you're gonna play i'm gonna do this you're safe gonna do bet. it I remember years ago talking to my dad about Parasite and I go, I think it's Quentin, but I think Parasite, I think we are due, we're, we're due for like another, like, holy shit, this one best picture. And he's like, I don't know. And when Bong Joon-ho won best director, I jumped up from my couch and I was like, I told you Parasite's going to win. And he just kind of was like, wow, I wasn't expecting this. So no, I, knew, I don't. I yeah. knew Parasite had a really good shot that year. As soon as it won its first award for fucking screenplay, yeah, and it shocked everyone. We're like, excuse me. And then Bong Joon, what do you made, mean? He made the Oscars kiss. That's gonna be the thumbnail, by the way. If you made it this far, it's gonna be. I'm already talking about it before it comes out. It's him ki- making them kiss because he's great. <laughs> and it's our heads on the Oscars kissing. You already. You read my mind, my guy. Yeah, it's not. It's not our face on my kissing. mind. Bringing it back. It's that's why it's gonna win. But it's not gonna be on those Oscars. It's gonna be on another Oscar thing. It's two different things. What? So okay. So you think so? Your your dark horse is gonna be Coda then. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Okay. If you really want dark, dark horse, it'd go to Licorice Pizza. And if you want really dark horse, it's the movie that clearly deserves it that I told you this morning, which is Don't Look Up. Greatest movie of the year. That movie is so important. It's, it's, it's a. Have you heard of Climate Change? It's a masterpiece. I wouldn't have known. That movie is so smart. I didn't know it was about climate change the whole time. I'm like, what's going on? Every line of dialogue is climate change, climate change, climate change, climate change. Donald Trump. We'll get to climate it. Climate change, climate change. We're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Donald Trump reference. Donald Trump. But the whole time I went, I don't get it. Celebrity singing. I think, that, you- I think that was almost the, I think that was the part of the movie that I almost turned it off. Up until that point, <laughs> I sat there going, I hate my life. I- I and then Ariana this. Grande started singing. It was the line where she's like, you got to listen to your scientists. I almost, I got up and had to walk away because I was frustrated. I'll tell you this, her, her actual dialogue in the movie, I found out most of that was improv. So you know what? She's we'll just give that one. Leo. Yeah, we'll give that one not to Adam, you know. Ariana said, I don't need no script. Okay. I was on I Sam was- and Cat. <laughs> I was gonna say Victoria. Have you seen, I was, yeah. Have you seen Victoria's? I acted alongside a puppet. I'm a fucking pro at this. Okay. <laughs> Oscar nomination predictions. There you go. There you we have hate. It. We hate everything about these lists. Ugh. Yeah, this was this was a very upsetting year. I liked last year more, and I felt like last year was kind of bleh because it was a pandemic. But I don't three, even th- remember what movies I were, were out last year. <laughs> well, I that was All- the second time in my life that my favorite movie of a year was Best Picture because Moonlight, which was retroactive because at the time I thought it was La La Land, but it was because I didn't sit with it long enough. But it was Moonlight. Neither did the Oscars, apparently. <laughs> you see, I, me and the Oscars, we're like this. We're like this. We did the same thing. And then Nomadland, which won last year. I love that movie. That movie was incredible. Oh, yeah. I, I've heard, yeah. And then she went on direct Eternals, and that Eternal. Wait, wait, what was it? The Eternals. The Eternals. The Eternals. The Eternals. You know what? Barry is in. (laughs) Barry is in. Barry's doing Lion King. Wait, isn't isn't Barry doing? uh, Barry Jenkins doing Lion King too? Yes, he is. But that wasn't the Barry I was talking about. Oh, what Barry were you talking about? You know, he was in Eternals. Oh, Barry Keoghan. Fuck. <laughs> I forgot. Sorry. You know what's joke. funny, though? I do think he's probably the worst one in that movie. Is In Eternals, I think he's probably the worst. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> he's the only one that makes sense in the entire movie he's the only one that's like why are we doing this this is fucking stupid and then everyone groaned when paperboy kissed that man they're like oh paper no man the the one the one that was the best was the one that died because he was actually a cool character but then they killed him off because they were like oh we don't have anything else to do with him oh he he was boring as fuck. What? You mean the guy that like had to calm down Angelina Jolie from yes, going the guy berserk? That had to calm down. Oh, he was boring as fuck. At least he had a personality. He. We're done. We're talking about it. The, the fact that you're making me argue about a movie that I really don't care about to begin with is pissing <laughs> Why me wasn't off. that nominated? <laughs> like, comment, subscribe if you like the podcast, uh, the Razcast. Watch our other two. We may, hey, maybe, maybe we'll do a follow up. I don't think we'll do a follow up because there's no reason because you're going to be at work and I don't want to talk about how annoying Amy Schumer is for an hour because they're doing the three hosts. But Wanda Sykes Sykes will be there and hopefully, yeah. Oh, and Regina Hall. uh, I heard that she's great in uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. Borderlands 3.5. Yeah, she's in that. Uh, and same with uh, like Andy Samberg and uh, Will Arnett's the bad guy. You Maybe know. Amy Schumer will be a lot better now that she's a mom. Maybe she's calmed out a little bit. I had oh. a kid out of my vagina. Do you know oh. what that's like? Oh, Jesus Christ. No, because you're a man. Well, d- and you slammed my pussy so hard. What are you? T- my name is my name is Amy Schumer and I got fucked. Did you know that? <laughs> What are you going at? What is happening? <laughs> that is a whole Amy Schumer sketch at 
Oh, you're geez. welcome. I was gonna. <laughs> I was gonna bring up you were bringing up tiny tina and i was like well it's funny i'm glad that they got real actor like fun actors for that because we know what's gonna probably happen when the borderlands movie comes out oh god i forgot about that did you see the the the, the clip of randy pitchfork pitchford or whatever pitchfork? Uh, pitchfork pitchfork he created pitchfork <laughs> the website i don't care he annoys me and oh, no, he's like and every single like he was talking with Eli Roth next to him and Eli Roth looked like he wanted to go hostile on him. He's like, hey, have you I, seen my movies about cannibalism? I, I will eat you, dude. <laughs> I mean, we've seen his uh, card tricks. They should have just had him host the Oscars and do card tricks the entire time. Because let's be real. Oh, you know what? Today's the 20th anniversary the day we're recording. The day we're shooting is the 20th anniversary of when the uh, best animated feature was a part of the Oscars. And wow. did you, you do you remember who won? Shrek, right? Shrek. You know, and you know what? All the other movies have gone downhill from that. Well, you know, Shrek is love. Shrek is life. You, you want to know who else was nominated that year? Hmm. There was two other animated movies, which you know says a lot. Monsters Inc. And you know, the childhood hero of mine, Jimmy Neutron, boy genius. Oh, those two movies fucking slap way harder than Shrek, and I like Shrek. The second Shrek, one's better Shrek though. Shrek two is so much better. Yes, I agree. But you know, the you know, every, high bar. See, now I'm mad because now I'm trying to think. Of, oh well, you know, it's okay because we're gonna finish shooting this tonight. And you know what, Eric, in the morning, <laughs> I'm making waffles. And they took. Shrek 4D away from Universal Orlando Resort. Stop rambling. Help. I'm trying to end the podcast. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>